The hand of the Lord is the hand that makes whole. The hand of the Lord is the hand that makes whole. The hand of the Lord is the hand of wholeness. Every broken piece in this house this morning every broken piece in careers and marriages in lives and experiences concerning family backgrounds family issues concerning health and medical issues every one of these broken fragments and broken pieces there is wholeness by the hand of the lord please stand to your feet please stand to your feet and receive wholeness Receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit unto wholeness. Businesses that are sick, businesses that are undergoing one form of challenge or the other, or the other. Receive wholeness, receive wholeness. Academic pursuits, academic pursuits that have been stalled, that have been stalled. Receive wholeness, receive wholeness. Marriages that are on the brink of collapse, receive wholeness. Receive wholeness, receive wholeness by the hand of the Lord. Say by the hand of the Lord, I receive wholeness over your health, your health. Receive wholeness, receive wholeness over the future that looks very bleak and dark and unpromising. Receive wholeness over your future. Receive wholeness over your future. Wholeness by the hand of the Lord. And the hand of the Lord is mighty and strong to destroy yokes of the devil. And so by virtue of the hand of the Lord, I command every yoke, every yoke, every yoke destroyed. Yokes of infirmity, yokes of barrenness, yokes of affliction, yokes of sinful habits destroyed. destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the hand of the Lord brings her from the backstage to the palace. The hand of the Lord is what Brings a man from the backstage to the palace. May the hand of the Lord reposition somebody here this morning. Unto your place of relevance. Unto your place of influence. Unto your place of dominion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can you give the Lord thanks and give him praise? Worship him and exalt him. I say worship him and exalt him. Praise him and adore him. He's worthy. He's worthy. You may now take your seat. You may now take your seat. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God on the highest. Hallelujah. It's so beautiful to be a child of a living God. It's so beautiful to be in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so beautiful to carry a virus of the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many people here are infested and infected with the virus of Jesus? JV, Jesus virus. Jesus virus must be in, in your DNA. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is your kingdom identity. That is your spiritual identity. When the devil sees you carrying that mark, he avoids you. Say nonsense. He, he, he will hiss at you. May the devil hiss at you. The devil must never stretch out a hand to you for a handshake. 
glory to God in the highest. Child of God, carry fire. Child of God, carry fire upon your head so that the devil knows that this is not the one to mess with. Enough of doing church. Help me tell your neighbor, get real with Jesus. Oh, why should we? we have not come to play. I said, tell your neighbor, get real with Jesus. Uh -huh. If nobody said anything to you, say to yourself, get real. Get real with Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The hand of God. Of course, that's the title of the message. Uh, I believe the Lord will have me uh, share with us this morning the hand of God. Amen. Now we understand that um, when we say God, God has become a generic word now. Because when I say God and somebody else is say God, we might be referring to different things. There's a story many years ago of um, someone in a sitting room gathering, I suppose, and was saying, oh, God is so good, oh, God is so gracious, God is so loving. I talk to him every morning and so on and so on. And some of you always said, yes, I, I see God every morning. He's right in front of me. I wake up, I see him, I bow to him and so on and so on. Ah, so that person said, you see him every morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when the person now inquired further about this God, it happened to be David Beckham that that person was talking about. How many remember David Beckham? We used to play soccer. In fact, most people don't even remember him anymore. So when you say God, God is generic. It's a general term. It's an English word, but today it's subject to a lot of abuse and misinterpret misinterpretation and misunderstanding. But when you hear the hand of God, I'm talking about God Elohim. I'm talking about God Jah. God Yahweh. Thank God they put vowels inside Yahweh. The vowel A, the vowel E, because normally it should be Y-H-W-H. And uh, it can be pronounced. The sages of old will simply go quiet when they came across that name, Aikwe. Because it's a holy name. It's a name of reverence and power. So when we say God, we're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about Jah. We're talking about Jehovah Adonai. We're talking about Elohim, the eternal creator. We're talking about Shama, Jehovah, Shama. We're talking about Jehovah, Nisi, the one who is ever present, the one who is ever with us. We're talking about Jehovah, the righteous, the most holy. We're talking about Jehovah, El Roy. Hallelujah. We're talking about Jehovah, the one who is most high, El Elyon. So when we say hand of God, it's the hand of that Jehovah. Not made, not created, not crowned by any man. Not appointed space or time or rank. Hallelujah. He is the existent one, the only existent one who pre-exists existence itself. Hallelujah. The hand of God. May that hand of God come upon you again today. May that hand of God be tangible and visible in your life again from today. May that hand of God be the backing of your life from today. The hand of God. May it be visible in your career, in your business, in your ministry, in your academics, in your pursuit. May that hand of God be evident. May that hand speak with a voice that cannot be contradicted or gainsaid by anyone. May that hand carry you. <laughs> May that hand sustain you. Hallelujah, the hand of God. Now, now, scriptures use human body parts to depict this God we're talking about. And that is to help us understand him better. Because, you know, we are humans. And many times we see through the prism, P-R-I-S-M, the prism of our humanity. Amen. Amen. We are, we are beings created with the power of imagination. So when I say eyes, your mind goes to the eyes 
of someone because that's what we know. When I say feet, our feet. So your mind will go to the human feet. Amen. When I say webbed feet, how many remember webbed feet? Veterinarians will know. Some students who did biology in secondary school here do not know. There are some classes of birds that have webbed feet, like the duck. That is why they can float in water. Their feet are not parted. Somebody, I had somebody say kwekwe yeke years ago. I said, which one is kwekwe yeke? I know kwekwe yeke. Which one is kwekwe yeke? Hallelujah! So the Bible talks about the eyes of God. For us to understand that he can see. The Bible talks about the ears of God. Not physical eyes like you and I. Which cannot see what is outside right now. Can you see what is outside right now? Actually, after man fell, science has discovered, science, they discovered that what man sees now of the color spectrum is only 3%. We only see 3%. So if you think right beef, if you think you know everything, if you think I see everything, you can see the rainbow, you can see the skies, we are seeing only 3% of the color spectrum. Read Ezekiel. Study Ezekiel chapter 1. You will see him saying, the appearance of the one that I saw was like the appearance of fire. Fire enfolding itself. He couldn't describe it. The glory, ah, the glory indescribable. We lost 97% with the fall of man. Before Adam fell, he saw everything clearly. Hallelujah. The hand of God. So he has eyes if he has hands, he has eyes, but not like our eyes. He has ears, but not like our ears. Many times, uh, your wife is calling you, and you may not hear. Many times, somebody is on the phone with you, and speaking, and you are telling the person, I can't hear you. And here, in our own part of the world, we say, it's a network problem. You know, <laughs> but the ears of God hear clearly. The eyes of God see clearly. The eyes of God see both the visible and the invisible. Amen. So we're not talking about physical eyes, but the Bible uses those parts, those expressions for us to catch an understanding of who we are dealing with. Of what God can do. Of his nature and his character. Hello church. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 6. And verse 8. The Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. Psalm 34 and verse 15. A, the A part. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. He has eyes. The ears of God. Psalm 34, 15. But the B part. It says there that, and his ears are open unto their cry. The A part says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. The B part says, and his ears. So he has ears. Amen. So don't be, don't be confused if we say the hand of God. Hallelujah. He even has a finger. The Bible talks about the finger of God. Jesus said to the Jews, he said, by whom do your people, your brothers, cast out demons? Because they were accusing him of casting out demons by Beelzebub. He said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons among you, he said, then the finger of God is come upon you. He said, the finger of God is among you. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 8, 17 to 19. The finger of God. Someone said, the finger of God. Every part of God is power. Every part of God is power. His eyes are power. Huh? Scriptures tell us that in revelations his eyes are like blazing flames of fire hallelujah every part of god is power the ears power the finger power amen let's read exodus 8 17 and they did so for aaron stretched forth his hand with his rod remember how that pharaoh kept defying the god of israel elohim 
equating the God of Israel to his own gods. That was a culture. The Egyptian culture of the Bible we are reading about was a culture of idolatry and occultism. Hallelujah. Do you know the number of times that Pharaoh will drive Moses away? He will drive Moses and Aaron away and say, you will not see my face again. Out! Do you think those were empty threats? I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Because that was a culture of idolatry and occultism. And Pharaoh was one of the idols. Pharaoh, Pharaoh was one of the idols of Egypt. Did you hear what I said? Pharaoh was not his name. Pharaoh was the title of anyone occupying that position. Their names, most of the time, was Ramesses. Praise the Lord. Who is with me up to now? Amen. So when he said, you will not see my face again, out of here. Do you know what English people call Anosi and Asasi? How many people understand English? I need to show you, <laughs> raise your hands. Oh, so that's not English. I thought it was English. Anosi, what they will send to somebody as I see, divination and enchantment they will release upon a life to cause harm, grievous harm to the person. So when he said, I will not see your face again, Moses was not meant to wake up the next morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the hand of God was at work in the life of that servant of God. And he will simply shake those things off how many times do you think the devil has tried you sitting, listening to me? This thing we call grace. Ah! We can't define grace. We have words for grace. So, unmerited favor, you know, God giving you uh, what you do not deserve, uh, and so on and so on. <laughs> grace is indescribable. Praise the Lord. <laughs> there are depths of grace that we can't explain. There are depths of grace that, that we, can't, we can't describe with words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A bullet flying over your head without you even knowing that anything was shot in your direction. Hallelujah. You had a terrible dream. And in that dream, they cut off your head. And that was 25 years ago. And your head is still on your neck. Hallelujah. You were not meant to survive it. Did you hear what I said? Some had the same dream and they woke up dead. I'm using King James. They woke up dead. How do you wake up dead? Hallelujah. Are we still together, please? Amen. So the finger of God. Verse 17. And they did so for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lice in man. And in beast, all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. I hope we know that lice are parasites. The, the singular is laos, the plural is lice. Amen. Like mouse and mice. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. And the magicians did so with their enchantments. Lice are parasites. How many people have gone to boarding house before? Boarding house, raise up your hand. I have been in boarding house before, I know. How many people have had lice before, growing up? Raise up your hand. How did we used to kill lice then? Your thumb and the nail, the two nails you bring together here. What will happen? Blood will come. Some people don't know lice here. Ah, inner. How come you're so polished and... Um, you know, you, you don't know those basic things I'm talking about. Imagine the whole dust of a place, location, geographical location, being full of lice, blood-sucking parasites. Way back then, if you had one in your head, it, you begin to scratch because it begins to eat you badly. And you have a way of dusting your head. We take uh, plain paper, you know. We cut out exercise book. 
You begin to do this to your head. At times you get a comb so that all the lights can fall in there. Some don't know what I'm talking about. And then you now take your nail and begin to kill them one after. Pa, 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 pa. Lies. <laughs> Imagine the whole land full of lies. On man, on animals. Huh. I wonder why Pharaoh was so stubborn. But I think his confidence was in his, his power. He did not understand that you don't contend with the hand of God. You don't contend with the hand of God. Let's read on. Verse 18. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies. But they could not. So there were lies upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, <laughs> This is the finger of God. One Bible commentary said, this is the act of God. This is the finger of God. So the finger of God is the act of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Imagine. His heart was because he had confidence in himself. And he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Another picture that depicts the nature of God from the human part, the face of God. How to remember the face of God. And generally we say, I'm going to seek God's face. It's not as if he's going to present his face to you like this. But simply what you, are going to, what you are saying is that you're going to behold his presence. You're going to spend time in his presence so that you can receive his mind. He even has a mind like you have a mind. Praise the Lord. The face of God. Now the face of God, there is a dimension of the face of God that depicts a reality. But then there's a dimension of the face of God that is his real face. Let's read. Psalm 34 and 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the, from the earth. So the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. That could be the hand of God. That could be the part of God. That could be the might of God. It's a picture of God resisting evil. But let's see something in Exodus. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 20. The Bible says there, and he said... Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. This one was not a picture to depict something. If Moses had seen the face of God that day, he would cross over to the other side. Hallelujah. He would cross over. And there are scriptural accounts of men that saw the face of God. They crossed over. Uh, they crossed over. They didn't stay back. They crossed over. Hallelujah. The face of God. These things are put there for us to understand. There's even the mouth of God. So like you have a mouth, God has a mouth. And he was talking about one of his prophets. You know, one of the prophets, Jeremiah the prophet, addressing Zedekiah, who was king of Judah. And he said, my word is in his mouth. He speaks from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you hear the hand of God, we're talking about the person of God. Because the hand of an individual represents the individual, true or false. At times some things will happen and somebody will say, I see the hand of Bolanli in this thing. I see the hand of John in this thing. What they are saying is that John did it. So your hand represents you. Your hand represents your presence. Your hand is your identity. The hand of God is his identity. The hand of God is his presence. The hand of God represents his power. The hand of God represents his deeds and his doings. What he can do, what he can make happen. The hand of God. Hallelujah. So the hand of God is exalted. Because by nature God is above everything. Amen. Amen. He's the most high. El Elyon. The hand of God. Amen. Okay. Three things now about the hand of God. The hand of God for demonstration. The hand of God for manifestation. The hand of God for revelation. The hand of God for demonstration. 
That is a foundation for the hand of God. The hand of God for demonstration. The hand of God for manifestation. The hand of God for revelation. The hand of God for demonstration. The hand of God for manifestation. The hand of God for revelation. Acts chapter 4. Let's open our Bibles there. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. This was Peter and John. You know, when they went back to their company. Chapter 3, they just healed the man at the gate beautiful. And then uh, they were arrested. And uh, in chapter 4, they were now released let go and went, they went back to their own company and then they were praying this prayer and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child Jesus by stretching forth thy hands to heal demonstration of your power to heal demonstration of your power to deliver the hand of God is still potent today the hand of God is still mighty amidst us today. Praise the Lord. Yeah. How come I'm not seeing it? Maybe you are the one that should examine yourself. Praise the Lord. Because God will follow the principles of his word. He can't break his principles. But I know there is no one who does not benefit from the hand of God every day of our lives. Why do I say so? The Bible says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There's so much evil in every day, yet you live from day to day. Hallelujah. The hand of God for demonstration. Ah, there was a time, I don't have, there was a time the Philistines captured the ark of the God of Israel. The ark of the God of Israel was the place of the presence of Jehovah God, Old Testament. Hallelujah. You know, now we don't talk about the ark in the New Testament. There's no ark on the altar. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that was a symbol of God's presence for them in the Old Testament. So there was a time that, that Israel fell to a low point. Any ground you leave untended is taken over by the devil. Any ground you leave untended, the devil takes over. Any space you withdraw from, the devil takes over. Stop losing grounds. Help me tell your neighbor, stop losing grounds. Stop, look at somebody and say, stop losing grounds. Hallelujah. Any ground you lose, the devil takes over. Israel fell and the devil took over. The Philistines captured the ark. In fact, there was war between Israel and the Philistines. And uh, the, the Israelites thought to themselves, let's go bring the ark of God. But they were in a low place. It was during the rain of Eli as priests and the sons Hophni and Phinehas were, were, were re re rebels they, 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 they were scoundrels they, they were far from God they were profane, they were unholy ah! <laughs> unholiness will discount you did you hear what I said? unholiness will discount you can I say it again? unholiness will discount you praise the Lord and you cannot live holy by your own might and power. You know? You live holy by grace. Depending upon him every day of your life. Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Proverbs 3, 5. And he will direct your path. You depend upon him. And you are disciplined within you. Hello church. I said Hello. So, Israel said, let's bring the ark of God into the camp and let's see whether these Philistines uh, will be able to stand. When the ark got into the camp, we know that story. The men of Israel, their fighting men shouted, yeah! Because they were excited that the ark had come. <laughs> so they said, the ark is come into the camp. Their enemies, the Philistines too, shouted. But they said, God has come into the camp. There's a difference between the ark has come into the camp and God has come into the camp. Their enemies knew what they did not know. May your enemies not know what you don't know. May you always be ahead of the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Their enemies understood. They said, God has come into the camp. What did they say? They said, quit yourselves as men. Let's fight. And they routed Israel. And they seized the ark. And in their own folly, because the devil can never be wise. Did you hear what I said? 
The devil is not wise. Another thing about the devil, can I demystify him? Number one, he does not have wisdom. Number two, you know number two about the devil? He has no power. Did you hear? Once God has spoken, twice have I heard that what? Power belongeth to who? To God, not the devil. The devil is not wise, number one. The devil does not have power, number two. Number three, can I demystify him again? The devil is not everywhere. The devil is not everywhere. That is why he walks with principalities and powers and uh, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places and the rulers of the dark place of this world. Uh, because uh, he cannot be everywhere at every time he networks. The devil networks. Don't let him network in your area. But he networks. Did you hear what I said? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, then what then does the, does the devil have? There is an English word again. That English word is called Areke, Reke. <laughs> Students of English, I'm sure you know that word. Areke, Reke. Deception. Hey, deception. What the devil does is to deceive you. What the devil does is to deceive us. He brings it. It's shining. It's attractive. It looks beautiful. It's adorable. It's admirable. You want to take it. You want to seize it. The end thereof is death. My son, when the enemy entices thee, what does the Bible say? Consent thou not. He will entice eh, because he's the deceiver. Ah, the Bible calls him the deceiver, the accuser. No power. So he uses deception. When you fall for his deception, he gets you. I've been praying for the past 10 years over this thing. God is not answering. That's the devil speaking to you. I don't think he can do it. I don't think he can do it. So that you will doubt your faith and you begin to accept and believe what he's suggesting to you. That's the beginning of the end. Hallelujah. So they brought their God, Dagon. They had a temple for him and the ark of the God of Israel they seized the place beside Dagon. They say, let's put spiritual things beside one another. How dare you equate the God who created the heavens and the earth with an idol? The next morning, Dagon had fallen down. The ark was intact. They said, Dagon, kill him, share. Dagon, what's wrong with you? What's your problem? Come on. They put him back. By the time you have a God that you can... <laughs> they put him back. And he said, Dagon, behave yourself. And he couldn't answer them. Have you been to Benin before? I don't, don't be annoyed with me, but it's my, you know it's my observation. Benin. In front of houses, what do we see? You see places for worshipping their idols. Metal, different things, palm oil on top, everything, you know. Benin people, they are my in-laws, you see, you know. They are my in-laws, the new people. My strong in-law self. But you know, what I'm saying is just the fact. One day I was in Benin, in Nicoba Hill. I wanted to take uh, commercial transport, took it, took it. You know, and we were struggling. It was a Sunday. I was going to church. This was in the 90s. So, and then I looked behind me, and I saw a man and a woman, a, a, woman, a couple. They had a red, red outfit with cowrie shells. And they had this shake shake in their hands. And they also were rushing with us to enter bus. Apparently, they were going to the house of their masquerade to worship. It was this Sunday. You know, I said, ah, they are not even hiding these things. You know? <laughs> and if rain wants to fall, they might need to carry some things away from the front of the house and put it inside. And when there's no more rain, they bring it outside. Ah, what kind of God is that? The next morning, they got to the house of Dagon. And they found Dagon had not only fallen down, it was dismembered. It was scattered before the ark. The ark was standing. God, no, they make noise. Oh. Hallelujah. The hand of God, no, they make noise. Oh. But the effects of the hand of God, visible, you can't deny. Hallelujah. Mm. Demonstration. Some say demonstration. Ah, Elijah said to them, he said, the God who answers by fire. 
Let him be God. He said, you say you are serving Baal. I'm calling upon the God of Israel. Let's see. Amen. And what happened that day? There was a demonstration. And the prophets of Baal killed themselves. And when it was an evening time, the time of an offering of an evening sacrifice, he went and repaired the broken altars. He now slew the animal, laid the wood in order. And he said, bring me water that was cast on the land. When the hand of God is at work, that which is scarce becomes much. Hallelujah. <laughs> when the hand of God is at work, that which looks bleak becomes hope. Amen. Uh, the hand of God brings hope out of nothing. And by the time he called upon the God of Israel, fire, the fire of God fell. The fire of God licked the dust. Have you seen fire burning dust? The fire licked the dust before the fire licked the water. I thought water should kill fire. That day the fire of God licked water, licked dust before descending upon the sacrifice on the altar and he burnt it. Ah! He said, arrest the prophets of Baal. So the hand of God is number one. For demonstration. Don't forget that. The hand of God for manifestation. Someone say manifestation. When you make something manifest, you are making it known. Amen. Manifestation. And uh, there are th many things we can say under manifestation, but I'm looking at a particular aspect of manifestation. Judgment. Judgment. The hand of God for judgment. Under manifestation. The hand of God for judgment. Wherever the devil has pointed a finger at you, Wherever the adversary has pointed a finger at you, whatever it appears the adversary has put a hold on, whatever it appears as though the adversary has said that this one will never happen, the hand of God is relevant in such places. Hallelujah. The hand of God is relevant. They have, they have benched you at work. You've been on the same position for the past seven years. And they're counting days for you to get frustrated and resign. Or they might give you... Uh, compulsory retirement, something like that. So men think they can influence your destiny. No way. If you understand what I'm talking about. No way. The hand of God. Manifestation. I must read something. In First Kings chapter 13, from verse 2 to 6, there is the story of a servant of God whose name was not mentioned. Simply, he was called the man of God from Judah. And this man of God came to, on assignment from God, came to address a wicked king over the northern kingdom. You left your own territory, the south, because man of God from Judah. Where was Judah? In the south. You now went to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Help me with the remaining of his uh, identity. The one who sinned and who made Israel to sin. Because many times we forget who Jeroboam was. See his own uh, identity. Ah, they will say somebody, somebody. The servant of God. In the, in the case of Jeroboam. Jeroboam, the son of Nebuchadnezzar. The one who sinned and who made Israel to sin. Ha! Huh, what a CV. So this man of God had the effrontery to leave Judah and go to the north and to prophesy against everything that Jeroboam stood for. You know, he was treading dangerous ground, but he had backing. Someone say he had backing. What was his backing? The hand of God. As you go through life, never forget that you have backing. Let us see by the expressway, I have backing. The hand of God is upon me. As I lay down, I have backing. Everywhere may appear. In fact, the fence of your house may be very low. Maybe I'm talking to somebody here. Maybe your fence is very low. And every night before you sleep, you say, hey, hey, hey. this low fence, hey, hey, hey. You, long, but wow, hey, oh. you, you, know, you know how we are. Anytime somebody talks like that beside me, I say, that is not the language of faith. Hey, hey, hey. You know it's not really a prayer. Tell us the anu you want. Alone, shall Father means God be merciful to us. He's merciful by nature. If not for his mercy, you won't be saying what you are saying. So tell him, break it down. Lord, keep us. 
Lord, let your cover be sure round about us. Lord, let your hedge keep us. Let your angels encamp round about this place. Let this vicinity become fire. We are authorized to speak like that. Why? We have backing. The hand of God, backing. Hallelujah. I say backing. Someone say backing. So it means it's behind me. That hand, backing. And it's also in front of me. Opens up the way. So, if you are coming from behind me, Wabanli, if you are staying, waiting for me in front, you will meet him. Hallelujah. I'm sandwiched by God's glory. Amen. Amen. So, let's read. So, this man of God came from Judah. He cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Because there was an altar that was created in the north, so that the people would not go to Judah to worship God. And the altar of worship was meant to be in Judah. In fact, the temple of Solomon was built where? In Judah, in Jerusalem. That was the place God said he chose. So why do another altar? Why make the hearts of the people turn again or against that which God instituted? Let's read. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign, the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. It will be a sign. The altar shall be broken down, the ashes on it, because they've been offering animals. So the ashes will be poured out. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of a man of God which had cried against the altar in Bethel that he put forth his hand from the altar saying lay hold on him that is arrest him. And his hand which he put forth against him dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. He said arrest him. And the hand dried up. He said arrest him. And the hand dried I say as far as manifestation is concerned, I'm looking at judgment. Any adversary, any force that has said you are not going, the hand of God cuts them down. Hallelujah. Because the hand of God is potent and powerful and mighty. Mm. Mm. The hand of God. This, the man's hand withered. You know what he had to do? He had to beg the prophet. He said, You know, those details are not in the Bible like that. He said, ah. Because I'm not sharp, I'm not wise. Hey, I, I'm sorry, honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I got carried away. It was a case of temporary disorientation. I was temporarily mentally disoriented. <laughs> Please pardon me. The moment the man of God prayed and the hand was restored, I'm sure the king evaporated. Hallelujah. The man with whom the hand of God is is a dangerous fellow. We are simple because we carry the simplicity of Christ. But listen, in the realm of the spirit, we should be dangerous. When I see transformers, transformers, in fact, these days, transformers are beginning to look attractive. You see some transformers, they have fence around them, you know, they have paneling, you know, I say transformer. When we were growing up, transformers were not beautiful. I remember what transformers used to be like. They, you know, everything is metal, pipe like this, pipe like this, you know. And then the thing will be humming. Mm -hmm. It looks innocent, have you? Go and touch it. The Christian is like the transformer. Looks simple, everything's okay. But, ah. Help me tell the devil, devil, don't mess with me. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Hallelujah. Why? The hand of God is with me. The hand of God is upon me. The hand of God underguards me. Amen. Manifestation. Another instance. You remember the story of the writing on the wall in Daniel chapter 5? There was a king called Belteshazzar. Remember how that um, one night he began to have a wild party with his princes. And, and the officers in his kingdom. And he said, by the way, the golden cups, the silver cups that we seized from Israel when we captured Babylon. You know, you know it, was, it was, when we captured Judah, I beg your pardon. You know, it was Babylon that captured Judah. 
in 586 BC. It was Assyria that captured Samaria. Understand the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. hallelujah. Some up till now don't know there is a difference in the Bible between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And your constituency, my constituency, my constitution is the Bible. That's your constitution too. The power of God is in his word. What did Jesus say? He said, you err. E-R-R. That is you walk in error. You err. For you neither know the scriptures nor the power of God. The scriptures are the power of God. You must know it. Hallelujah. The words that I speak and the spirit that is upon me, it's a combination of the word and the spirit that brings the power. You must know it. You cannot be lazy with uh, studying the Bible and expect God's power to be available unto you. You must know it. And not only know it, do it. Do what it says. Hello, church. Hallelujah. And so it was the night of a drunken stupor. And so he began to praise. They brought the gold vessels, silver vessels that were sacred. Do you know in the Old Testament... Under the Levitical order, under the Aaronic order, do you know those vessels, gold vessels, the general priests could not touch them. Levites were not allowed to touch them. The sons of Gershon and Merari could not touch them. You had to be a direct descendant of Aaron to touch them. The general priests will handle the tents and the poles. They carry all those things. But when it came to the sacred vessels, it was the ironic line that could touch them. And they also will do it with a lot of reverence. You now took those vessels and you started pouring wine inside and began to praise the God of gold and silver. A hand appeared on the wall. They saw the part of a human hand. That's very strange. You don't see the person but you see a hand writing on the world on the wall in a very conspicuous manner what did he write help me bible scholars many many tekel who fasten that was what he said numbered numbered you have been numbered weighed in the balances and you've been found wanting the meaning of Many, many take care of us. But just that I was uh, enjoying life, when he saw that, uh, he almost collapsed and died. His heart almost froze. He almost had a heart attack. The mother said, because he didn't know the meaning of that writing, but was very intimidating. The hand of God, judgment, manifestation. So God's hand is not silent. Though. God's hand is highly effective. Let's talk about revelation. When we say revelation, there's an unveiling. There's an unveiling. Something is unveiled. Something comes into the realm of the consciousness of man. There's an awakening of awareness. Your awareness is awakened because it's been revealed unto you. Now you see it. Now you know it. Now you understand it. You comprehend it. Now you can use it. Now you can apply it. Revelation. Amen. Hmm. David, in the Bible, King David, the father of Solomon. Isn't it amazing that the father of Solomon happened to be the grandfather of Rehoboam? It's a puzzle. Isn't it amazing? That the father of Solomon happened to be the grandfather of Rehoboam. What I'm simply trying to say is, how do we compare Solomon with Rehoboam? A man was able to hold the kingdom together and his immediate successor scattered the kingdom. So, we have a duty first generation first line we have a duty to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation see the concentration must not be diluted sorry 
my generation is generation of sulfuric acid. <laughs> sulfuric acid, it must not touch your clothes, it will burn it. It must not touch your body, you know, because if it's the concentrated acid. Later, they said the IOPAC nomenclature came and they started calling it tetra, oxo, sulfuric, ah, we sulfuric acid, we know, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid. <laughs> I even did tri titration. Praise the Lord. You don't swallow that, you know. It's not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't dilute the intensity of that concentration. And it also means you, first generation, must know the God you are serving. And the knowledge of that God and your convictions based on that God, you teach the next. And you teach their own. See, some of us here are grandparents. What you know, teach not only your children. You know the best way of teaching them? The best way of teaching? Model. Model it. Model it. Model it. Prayer. Model it. Integrity. Model it. Diligence. Model it. Let them see you live it. Hallelujah. Why? From ages 1 to 7, children see, children do. Children see, children do. Children see, children do. Children see, children do. So, Tolu Alokwe saw, Tolu Alokwe did. That's me. I saw, I did. I saw my father smoking. And I will always offer to empty the ashtray. See, you understand? So, on the way to the kitchen to empty the ashtray, I will straighten out the stubs of cigarettes, get a matches, or a matchstick, and light the stub, and begin to puff away at it. Children see, children do. Assuming he modeled prayer, I will begin to want to pray like him. Assuming he modeled uh, 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 soul winning, and my father will wake up every Saturday morning and go and win souls. What do you think will enter my subconscious? So, parents who tell lies, model. Parents who scope, model. Go and tell your daddy that mommy said the money has finished and so on and so on and so on. Go and tell him. Just go and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So David, back to the story of David. Revelation. Talking about the capabilities of the hand of God. I want to read from 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 15. David was the man that the Lord gave the vision of the temple unto. David was a pioneer. Hallelujah. I said David was a pioneer. Praise the Lord. I was doing some studies recently. You, you, you know, usually we say, we say David uh, established the music guild, the choir guild for old Israel. You know, we say that because uh, he appointed uh, the Levites as psalmists. He also was called the sweet psalmist of Israel and so on and so on and so on. But, so the official choir guild that revolved around the, the Levites, and that's why when you're studying Psalms now, you see uh, a Psalm of Asaph, uh, Shegionoth, you know, you, Alamoth. <laughs> Those are musical rhythms and notes because the Psalms are from the word psaltery, which means music. So the book of Psalms is the official song book or hymn book and prayer book of a nation of Israel. Anyway, Samuel played a prominent role in teaching how the order of the choir guild should be. And he caught it. And then he established it. So, revelation by the hand of God. He was the man that God chose to give the dimensions of a temple. Before David, no man came close to that. In fact, it never occurred to any man who lived before David that the presence of God can be housed. The ark was under curtains, under the elements of the weather. Summer, winter, autumn, which one again? Spring. Amen. Or oh, dry season. And wet season. And he was in his palace one day. 
I said, how come I live in a sealed palace and everything is okay? The air conditioning is central. And when I need heat, the heat into is central, just change temperature. So how come I am this comfortable and the ark of God is sitting in tents under the elements of weather? I must build a house for my God. He was the first person. The hand of God was moving him. And he conceived the vision of the temple. Someone say amen to that. Yeah. It means the hand of God has a way of moving us into things that are dear to God. Into realms that are uncommon, unusual. The hand of God positions us to begin to desire things that matter. Things that matter to God. Let's read. First Chronicles 28, 15 to 19. The weight, I'm just shortening it. It's a long read, but I want to shorten it as we start from verse 15. The weight for the lampstands of gold and their lamps of gold. So lampstands of gold, their lamp also of gold, the stand of gold, the lamp itself of gold. By weight, for each lampstand and its lamps. For the lampstands of silver, so some of the lampstands had silver. By weight, he measured it. For the lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand. And by weight, he gave gold for the tables of a showbread for each table. And silver for the tables of silver. So some gold, some silver. Also, pure gold for the forks, the basins, the pictures of pure gold. I like, I like it when the Bible says pure gold. The Bible does not say gold plated. When is this gold plated? It's not pure gold. I hope you know. Uh -huh. And ladies, ladies, you know, men, we don't know. If a man sees costume, a man like me, generally, if you see costume and you see real gold, you don't know the difference. Say, so, ah, that gold that that lady used is going to be very expensive, or very, very expensive. And somebody beside you, uh, his costume is 10,000 naira. She's like, eh? I said, was making any, any. Mm. So there is GL, there's something they call GL. And then there is gold, go, go. They are not the same. So this one says pure gold. Someone say pure gold. Pure gold. He was providing for the temple of his father. Hmm. And the golden bowls. He gave gold by weight for every bowl. Bowl. Gold. And some silver. Real silver. You know, silver too has weight. Huh. Silver by weight for every bowl. And the refined gold by weight for the altar of incense. For the altar of incense was the one before the ark of God. That one had to be refined. It was beyond pure gold. Huh. I don't want to go into some things. Okay. I'll, I'll just stay. That is the gold... Cherubim that spread their wings overshadowed the ark of a covenant of the Lord. All these, somebody say all this. All these, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by what? His hand upon me. All the works of these plants. The fine details of the dimensions of a temple and the fine details of the materials of worship in the temple all this the Lord made me understand in writing, in writing, by his hand upon me. Meaning an unction came upon him. He, be he began to write things down. He was writing things he did not know how he came about. Hallelujah. Have you found yourself in that realm before? Have you found yourself saying things you never knew you knew? A a amen. <laughs> it's the hand of God that makes it happen. It's the hand of God that makes it happen. And he was writing. The hand of God brings revelation. The hand of God helps you to unearth treasures. Hidden things come to light by the hand of the almighty God. Hidden things come to light. Amen. Uh, the part of God is hidden in his hand. I don't have time. The part of God is hidden in his hand. So what does the hand of God do? do what does he do the hand of god what does he do 
the hand of God, what does he do? You know, I've said the nature of it, manifestation, revelation, demonstration. What does it do? Number one now, it promotes. The hand of God promotes. Help me to say that to your neighbor. The hand of God promotes. Do you know your neighbor's name? If you don't know your neighbor's name, please ask for the person's name and call the person by name and say God's hand will promote you. Did, did you call the person by name? Did you call the person? Brother Tolu? Did your partner call you by name? Uh -huh. You know his name. You know each other. Uh -huh. Nobody, nobody called me by name. Nobody. Amen. Nobody said anything to me. God's hand will promote you. I'm jealous now. Pray for yourselves and you do. The hand of God promotes. When there is promotion, there is a change of status from one level to another. When there is promotion, there is a change of experiences in a better direction, in a higher direction. Amen. When there is promotion, there is exaltation. The hand of God promotes. As a teenager, Joseph began to have dominion dreams. He saw the sun, the moon, 11 stars bowing down to him. He told his father, his father said, what is the meaning of this? His brothers envied him and hated him subsequently. And one day they had the opportunity to deal with him so that they could kill his dreams. Ha! Ah, the hand of God behind your dreams make your dreams unstoppable. Amen. Praise the Lord. That dream came by the hand of God and the hand of God sustained that dream. So they couldn't kill the dream. And they could not kill the dreamer. They could not kill the dreamer. The hand of God will keep you till the fulfillment of the plan and the assignment that God has for you. The hand of God will keep you, believe me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will live older than my father. Hallelujah. No, I'm saying it personally. If your father was 95 before he died, kid you know, what are you looking for? And you're not saying you live older than your father, eh? Pastor I know you still have father. I'm mother too. Praise God. <laughs> Glory. Amen. It promotes. So Joseph was put in pit in the pit because they sold him in slavery. Subsequently, he found himself in Potiphar's house. But the hand of God kept him. And from Potiphar's house, thanks to Mrs. Potiphar. Somebody say thanks to Mrs. Potiphar. Because <laughs> that was what God used for him to meet the chief butler and the chief baker in prison. In prison, he interpreted their dreams unto them. And the chief baker died as he interpreted it. And that made the chief butler to be afraid of Joseph and to know that he was for real. But by the time liberty came upon him, he forgot for two years. Why? Life is good. Life is good. You know, everything was good now. He had forgotten. Hey, oh king. The king said, are we still in power? We're still in power. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. And then the king now had a wake-up moment. Something jolted him to reality. God does that for us many times. A challenge will come, it will jolt you to reality. And so the king knew we can't just continue with the enjoyment. This is a problem. That vision is disturbing. Ah, sir, I remember somebody. Ah, he told me the meaning of my dream two years ago. Let's get him. Overnight. So say overnight. The story of Joseph changed. But that story did not begin overnight. God's hand kept him from his father's house. And that story did not end when he became prime minister. The story just began again. Hallelujah. The hand of God promotes. And in Genesis chapter 41, let's read. Genesis 41 from verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shewed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. See, God's hand 
promoted him. God's hand brought the manifestation of the dreams he had as a teenager many years after. Mordecai. Someone say Mordecai. Mordecai was promoted. Mordecai was not meant to leave. The Jews were not meant to leave, whether in Shushan or in the whole of the realm of the uh, Persian kingdom, the Medes and the Persians, the Jews were not meant to leave. Amen. But the hand of God moved Esther into the palace. May the hand of God move you to your place of prominence. The hand of God moved Esther to the palace. Huh? And uh, the hand of God singled Esther out from many ladies who were there. If you think Esther was the most beautiful there, I think you are not doing justice to that scripture. Again, there's something we call grace. Grace will make them desire you. Without you even being the best. Hallelujah. Have you seen that happen before? Without you being the best. Have you seen the best disqualified before? At times the best, humanly speaking, are disqualified. And it is those who don't... Ah, see what Apostle Paul said. He said, it is not the learned. It is not the intelligent. It is the foolish things and the best things of this world that you are using to confound the wise. That is God's style. Amen. Jesus wanted the work he came to do to be sustained. He should have looked for professors. He should have looked for theologians. Those who had mastered the law of Moses. Because he said, search the scriptures. He said, they are they who prophesy about me. He said, search the scriptures. So, he should have looked for those who knew the Torah inside out. Because the Torah was pointing to him, the Messiah. But he looked for fishermen. Someone said fishermen. Do you know fishermen smell? They smell like their fish now. Ah. Fishermen. That's a, ah. Were they not intelligent people? They were rabbinical schools for goodness sake. When Jesus lived in Palestine, rabbinical schools, schools where they turned out rabbis. Amen. Of the sect of the Pharisees, of the sect of the Sadducees, yes. The scribes, they were called scribes, they could write, they had knowledge, amen. They knew things. He should have used them, but he didn't use them. Anyway, Esther, she was preferred. You'll be preferred. I said she was preferred. You'll be preferred. Your proposal will be preferred. Uh, your, your, your own quotation will be preferred. Your own tender. You know there's something they call tender. For those who understand that. Your own tender will be preferred. The honor of God will rest upon your tender. Hallelujah. They say that is the one we want. Uh, that man, that man, that's the one we want. He's the one our hearts click with. We can walk with him. So they picked Esther. The chamberlain, the eunuch said to her, whatever I tell you to do, do she obeyed. And when it was her turn to go before the king, the king held her, his approval towards her. And she, she entered the harem and she became the queen in replacement for the arrogant one. Remember that story. And the next thing, the enemy saw something and said, ah! They want to enthrone the kingdom of God here. There is a Hebrew woman in the palace and this is bad. She's a covenant child. This is bad. Let's kill all the Hebrews. And so the devil inspired Haman, the son of Hanedatha. And he went and he said, Oh king, what will the king do for the man that the king is pleased with? The king asked him to prevent him. And said, Ah, that must be me. That must be me. That must be me. May your adversary be disgraced. You know he was disgraced. He was disgraced. <laughs> We know that story. I don't have time. Long story short, the gallows that is uh, the hangman's noose and whatever that was that, that Mordecai was meant to be hung upon was where Haman was hung upon. I will give men in exchange for you and people as a ransom for your life. Hallelujah. It is in the word of God. And you don't need to pray, die, 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 die. Ah, oh, you are, you are, you are idle. There is a word of judgment hanging over those who try you for evil. All 
all you need to do is to be ensure that the hand of God and the backing of the hand of God is with you. Don't go outside cover. Did you hear what I said? Don't go outside cover. That means stay under cover. Help me tell your neighbor, stay under cover. All your days, stay under cover. Hallelujah. The law had been passed that on a particular day, all the Jews in the realm of that king were to be killed. The law had been passed before Haman was hung. And the law of that kingdom was such that it could not be repealed. But do you know what the Lord did? When Haman's plot had been exposed and he had been killed, the king said to Mordecai, tell all your people, defend themselves. In the province of Shushan, defend yourselves. So when their enemies rose against, they kill, the Jews killed their enemies. Ah! Mordecai now became prime minister in the land. Somebody that was not meant to be alive. Somebody that Haman hated. He, he was now number two man, a stranger, a foreigner. The hand of God makes such things happen. Unreasonable things. It is you that you are looking for logic and reason. When grace is at work, there is unfair advantage. Did you hear what I said? Unfair advantage. When grace is at work, there is unfair advantage. And that's why people begin to say, is he the only one? It's not my fault. It is unfair advantage. And it is happening by grace. Hallelujah. Know something about grace? Grace is not restrictive. Grace is inclusive. Grace is for everybody. But everybody is not for grace. Grace is for everybody. But everybody is not for grace. Hallelujah. Esther chapter 10, verse 2 to 3. I'm rounding up now. I want to read from the New Living Translation, please. All of us will read it. One, two, let's go. His great achievements and the full account of the greatness of Mordecai, whom the king had promoted, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Media and Persia. Mordecai the Jew became the prime minister with authority next to that of King Xerxes himself. He was very great among the Jews who held him in high esteem because he continued to work for the good of his people and to speak up for the welfare of all their descendants. See, someone that was not meant to live. He was promoted. May you be promoted. May you be promoted. As I round up now, the hand of God propels. The hand of God propels. The hand of God propels. Help me tell somebody. The hand of God. Look at your neighbor. The hand of God propels. When there is propulsion, there is forward motion. There is advancement to propel, to push forward. A force is released that brings forward motion. The hand of God propels. We said it promotes, but now it propels. Hallelujah. You must have read before. First Kings chapter 18 from verse 45. You must have read that after the contest on Mount Camel between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. You must have read before that he went and he prayed, putting his head between his knees, asking the Lord for rain in the land because there was famine in the land for over three years. You must have read that by the seventh time of asking a servant to go and check the clouds, the servant came back, Nigerian boy, very smart, because he knew he would keep going. So he said, oh God, there is a very small cloud now. It's as small as the hand of a man. How could he have seen it from this plane? A cloud as small as a man's hand. Picture it yourself. Would you know that it's a cloud? If you see something that size. But I guess that guy just felt, listen, this man will kill me. But that was what the prophet was waiting for. A confirmation of faith. A word of agreement. He needed an agreement from someone that will agree with what he believed. When he had that, he said, tell Ahab, get on your horse. Get on your chariot. Begin to go to Israel. 
For I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And what did he do? Let's read. Oh, you're not there. First Kings 18, 45. Anyway, Ahab began the journey before him. Give it to us in the uh, old King James or new King James. Makes no difference. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, having said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain, God was waiting for the declaration of faith and God is waiting on you for the declaration of faith. I say again, God is waiting on you for the declaration of faith. After he made the declaration of faith and said to him, get on your horse. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. It came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds. God's hand was at work. Our faith mobilizes many times the hand of God. And wind. So it was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. Uh -uh. Everything just changed like that. And Ahab rode. So we know he didn't walk. And we know he didn't run. Ahab rode. And they had no cars then. I even saw... Uh, an helicopter-like plane the other day on CNN that is electric-powered now. So it does vertical takeoff, vertical landing. And it, it covers from city to city in some parts of the world right now. We are still fighting over NSC. And uh, anyway. <laughs> and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Yes, next verse. And the hand of the Lord. Someone said the hand of the Lord. Please rise. Please rise. Let's, let's read that scripture on our feet. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Let's read together. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he gathered up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Question, who got to Jezreel first? How did he get there? By the hand of the Lord. So the hand of the Lord does what? Propels. Look for a neighbor. Look for a neighbor. I say, look for a neighbor. If your neighbor does not look spiritual, change your neighbor. Look for a neighbor. Tell that person you are not my you are not my neighbor by accident. Uh -huh. Because God is not in the midst of confusion. Hallelujah. Tell that person, my neighbor, God's hand is propelling you where things have been slow where things have been stagnant where things have been static from today by the hand of the lord i decree propulsion forward movement divine speed concerning you in the name of jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord propels. We're going to sing a song right now. All of us, you know that song. It's a Yoruba song, but they should subtitle it for us in English. Yeah, they will subtitle it. Can we have it on the screen? My own screen, the screen behind me, the main screen. The, the, the main screen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to take it prayerfully. Prayerfully.
the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is upon my life. Please uh, keep your hands upon your head. It is your hand, it is your head. I want to pray, I want to pray for every one of us. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. As we lay hands upon ourselves, let your hand rest upon our hands. Let your hand bring perfection to our lives. Let your hand straighten out every roughness. Let your hand remove every shame. Let your hand remove every pain. Let your hand neutralize every affliction. Let your hand bring perfection. Let your hand bring glory. Let your hand bring speed. Let your hand bring comfort. Let your hand bring satisfaction. Let your hand bring fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. Let your hand bring greatness. Let your hand guarantee us dominion. Let your hand walk the walk of victory. Concerning us in the name of Jesus. Let your hand upon us be extended to the first generation. The second generation. The third generation. The fourth generation of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Let every cell in my body carry the hand of the Lord. Let every thought that will come into my mind be an expression of the mind of God. In the name of Jesus, let your hand speak over my career. Let your hand speak over my marriage. Let your hand speak concerning my children, concerning my spouse, concerning my grandchildren, and their children and their children. Let your hand carry us. Let your hand open doors. <laughs> Let your hand open doors. Let your hand open doors. Let your hand bring deliverance. Ah, deliverance. Let your hand bring deliverance. Let your hand cause every yoke to be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Let every hindrance and obstacle and every encumbrance be removed by the hand of the Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. It's a new you. It's a new me. It's a new day. Because of the hand of the Lord. We receive new experiences. Because of the hand of the Lord. Strength in our bodies. Because of the hand of the Lord. The least among us shall be a David. Because of the hand of the Lord. Thank you Father. You are worthy to be praised. And we exalt your holy name. Last thing I want to do. If you know you are not born again yet you know you haven't invited Jesus into your heart deliberately and personally before just wave at me just wave at me we all may be seated please so that I can see those who are waving at me I'm not gonna ask you to come to the front all heads bowed all eyes shut but you are ready for the hand of the Lord to begin to abide and reside with you. Because we said the hand of God is representative of his presence. So you are saying, I want the presence of God. And where that begins from is having a relationship with Jesus. Just raise up your right hand above your head. Pastor, pray for me. I will pray for you. Raise the hand above your head. Let me know who I'm to pray for. Up on the gallery, down here, makes no difference. Watching from home makes no difference. Wherever you are, just raise up the right hand and I know who I'm to pray for. Your heart is beating faster now. It's because you need to take this step I'm talking about. And when you come to Jesus, he will change you. Some people are here. You, you are shy because you don't want people to know that you are just giving your life to Christ. Ha. Ha. That may not be too too wise in itself because this is about eternity eternity and when we stand before God in eternity it will be a personal thing no friend of yours over there so if you are raising the hand raise it now if you are coming to the Lord come to him now I don't see any hand if you want to rededicate your heart to Jesus it's okay 
Just raise your right hand. You want to rededicate your heart to the Lord? Raise up your right hand. Neither do I see anyone. I don't know whether there's anyone in the gallery. No hand. Thank you. Let's give thanks and glory to the Lord. But please let's invite our unsaved friends and loved ones. And let them come to God's presence and hear the word of the Lord and be transformed. Lift up your hands and bless his name and give him praise.